This is not legal advice. We will be discussing e-bike rules and regulations and maybe share a few thoughts on why some of them might be a little silly. Plus, stick around to the end to see some truly egregious examples of folks just ignoring them completely. Before we get into the details of this law and that law, first we need to define what is an e-bike. And this definition is pretty consistent across North America. What it's normally defined as a bicycle with functioning pedals and an electric motor to assist you. That's the definition we will be working with today. Right off the top, what you need to know is e-bike rules and regulations vary from place to place. Here at Bike Tricks, we work primarily within North America. We have worked with some folks in Europe before and don't even get me started on European e-bike laws. In fact, like we're not gonna start on them. We're just gonna leave Europe to Europe. They're fairly strict and we'll just let them do them. Now in Canada and the US, they tend to fall under a few categories of federal, state or provincial, municipal, like your city, even bylaws. And then you get into some special laws for special places like state parks, provincial parks, and national parks. And we can dig into all of that later. But just know that there is a hierarchy of laws and like a state law cannot supersede a federal law. So while there is a lot of variation, there's also a lot to know. So let's get going. A question we're commonly asked is, do I need a license to ride this bike? In general, in most places, the answer is no. Probably not. As long as your e-bike looks like an e-bike and not, you know, more motorcycle than bicycle, you're probably fine. But if your so-called e-bike looks more like a dirt bike or motorcycle or has what I call the stygial panels, you know, they're there but they don't really function, you might want to just double check on that licensing question for your location. We're also asked often, can kids ride e-bikes? Can I buy this for my child? And I mean, that's kind of a personal question that's up to you. However, we do not recommend e-bikes for kids as they're very powerful and kids often don't have the strength or the skills needed to handle them. Most places also have laws in place about age limitations of who can and cannot ride an e-bike. And also as the mother of a teen boy, I know how they ride things. Like I'd rather him get good at his regular bike first. Next, we're gonna dig into the class system in the US. And I'm not talking about the haves versus the have nots. I'm talking about e-bike classes. Now these were developed in California, but a lot of other states have adopted them. Not necessarily all of them, but they are the most common system. Now there's three classes of e-bikes. Class one, pedal assist, only, so no throttle, and the motor is only allowed to assist you up to 20 miles an hour, and then it cuts out. Class two is pedal assist and a throttle with a motor that can assist you up to 20 miles per hour. Now class three, and this is where it gets, in my opinion, a little funny. A class three is pedal assist only, no throttle, that's the strange bit to me, but okay. And it can assist you up to 28 miles per hour and must have a speedometer. So that's the class system throughout the US. And so check where you're riding because it may say class one only or this park is class two and class one only or no class threes allowed. And that's what they're referring to. Another law that we're starting to see crop up and it just came into play in the second half of 2023 in New York City is laws targeting batteries specifically. Specifically. Now in New York City, you're only allowed to buy or sell or own e-bikes with UL certified batteries. What's happened is they've had a lot of not so great batteries from questionable manufacturers start apartment fires, which is not a great scene. So they've put in this law to help prevent that and bring in only certified batteries. And this is something we foresee happening in a lot of other major centers. So keep an eye out for that. In Canada, the laws are a little different. We don't generally use the class system that the Americans do. A lot of folks will reference them because it's what we see on websites and it's just part of like e-bike terminology at this point. In Canada, the laws will vary from province to province to territory to territory. I'm going to be referencing the Saskatchewan e-bike rules and regulations because that is what I'm most familiar with because Bike Tricks is headquartered right here in Saskatchewan. So in Saskatchewan, an e-bike is defined as a bicycle or tricycle that has pedals and an electric motor that are meant to work together to propel you forward. 
simple enough. It also has no more than a 500 watt motor and can only go up to 32 kilometers an hour. They also have some regulations in there about the fact that you're supposed to wear a helmet and there's some rules about ages and where you can ride them, but you can go check that out on SGI's website. Now, like I said, this can vary from province to province to territory to territory, but I have found this to be fairly consistent across most of Canada in my experience. I'm gonna dive into some muddy waters here. Now, I just said that in Canada, most places say your e-bike can only be 500 watts, like the motor can only be 500 watts. And in the States, it's 750 watts. So how are companies getting away with selling bikes that are 1,000 watts, 2,300 watts, 3,000 watts, like these big juicy motors? How is that allowed? Well, these rules are not in place to regulate what manufacturers can develop, build, and sell. They're in place to regulate what consumers can use. Now, does that mean you can't or shouldn't buy, say, a 1,000 watt e-bike? Absolutely not. I have a thousand watt e-bike and I absolutely love it. So on most, you can limit that speed, 32 kilometers an hour, 20 miles per hour, which means the motor is going to stop helping you at that speed, which means the motor output isn't gonna need to use that full thousand watts. You will reach that speed faster and you'll also have more available power for things like climbing hills. I mean, I can go out and buy a cool sports car and it could do 100 miles an hour, 160 kilometers an hour or more. That doesn't mean I should. You still need to follow the rules of the road. On that note, a lot of companies also offer the option to purchase your bike in an off-road setting, meaning it's not speed cap and you're going to get access to that full 1,000, 1,500, 2,300, whatever wattage is available. Now, these are meant to be used off-road on private private land, but it is to be noted that it is up to the consumer, the person purchasing the bike to one, know what they have, know what the regulations are, and to respect the rules of the road. So like I said at the top of this video, there's a lot of layers to e-bike rules and laws from your federal to state and provincial, municipal, this whole thing. There's also often special rules for special places like state or provincial parks, national parks, and even independently owned and operated trail systems or hunting grounds. If you're planning an adventure to any of these places, make sure you look them up ahead of time to be aware of what is and isn't allowed. Some hunting trails will allow ATVs, but they will allow e-bikes if they're a class two. Some trails only allow class one. Make sure you know ahead of time so you don't get to the gate and are unable to ride. It's better to be safe than sorry. Speaking of special rules and special places, one that we are most of us aware of, or I mean, if you drive a car, I sure hope you're aware of them, is the rules of the road. If you are commuting or riding bikes in traffic, you need to follow those too. If there's a bike lane, use it. Stay off the sidewalk. Stop for stop signs, that shouldn't have to be said out loud, but stop for stop signs and stoplights. You're going to want to obey the rules of traffic for your own safety, as well as the safety of those around you. Same with trails. Make sure you're respecting any rules on the trails. If there's passing rules and things like that, make sure you are aware of them, particularly on like mixed use trails. We see those a lot in cities where you've got hikers and folks out walking their dogs or riding their bikes or, you know, what have you. Be respectful, slow down, use your bell, give them a heads up, make sure you are following those rules. Can you get away with breaking these rules? Probably. Should you? This is not legal advice. I can't tell you to do that. That is a personal choice. That is on you, friend. However, if you're out there riding your unlocked thousand watt bike, on regular trails, most law enforcement in our experience probably won't even notice you as long as you are riding respectfully. Now, if you're out there stunting and speeding and being a nuisance and just a jerk, then those consequences are on your own head. Make good choices. What it comes down to is be kind, be respectful, follow the rules. Don't be that guy. You know that guy, the one that gives e-bikers and heck cyclists in general a bad name. Just don't be that guy or any of these guys. We've 
covered a lot of bits and pieces at a high level. And if we were to dig into all the nitty gritty details of every single one of these for all the jurisdictions, this would be a 10 video series and each of those videos would be multiple hours long. We don't have time for that. It is up to you to be aware of your bike, what you have, be aware of the rules and regulations in your area or where you're planning to ride and to look those up. For the most part, they're all available online. Just give it a quick Google. In the comments, let me know, is there an e-bike law or regulation that you think is particularly silly or maybe one you're a little unclear on? Go ahead and leave it down there. And while you're here, go ahead and like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all things e-bike.